You know what time it is. I am Big Will McKinney, and this is Smokehouse Talks, the place where we talk and teach all things pipe smoking. I'd like to welcome you back to another episode. Um, I've been away for a little bit, unfortunately. I caught the COVID bug a couple weeks ago, uh, but much better now. And uh, so we're back at it. So um, again, welcome back to another episode. Um, I want to invite you immediately after this episode to the newest installment uh, of my videos, which is called The Smokehouse Lounge. And that is where we light our cigar up, pour a drink. We kind of mimic the cigar lounge feel and we just talk about the trending topic of the day. So I want to invite you to stick around uh, right after we get done uh, with what we're going to talk about today for the Smokehouse Lounge. All right. Now, um, as for this episode today, I want to talk about pipe cleaning, cleaning your pipe. Um, I kind of happened across this um, the other week. Um, I had known that pipe cleaning was important. It was one of the things that um, I had saw early on uh, when I was researching pipe smoking. It talked about cleaning your pipe and that, but admittedly, I had got kind of caught up in just smoking, just having a good time trying out different pipes, trying out different tobaccos, and I hadn't cleaned my pipe. And last weekend, I was hanging out, just sitting around, looking at TV and that, and I'm like, you know what? Let me clean my pipe out real quick. And I can't begin to tell you all of the gunk and stuff that flew out of that pipe as a result of not cleaning it for a few weeks time. So I thought it would be important today just to kind of go through that process with you guys um, as far as cleaning your pipe. Now, let's talk about frequency. How often should you clean your pipe? Uh, there's varying um, opinions online. I've heard everything from every three days to every week to every time you smoke. And for me personally, I think it depends on the type of time that you have. Now, the process that I'm going to show you, it is a little bit time consuming. So, you know what, if you got that type of time where you can do it every day, um, have at it, um, I'm gonna stick to a uh, every week type deal. I have three different pipes that I smoke regularly. So um, every week I clean, oh, I'm sorry, every three weeks, because I have three of them. So every three weeks I clean all three of my pipes with the um, procedure that I'm going to show you today. And then I just rotate them. Every week I'll, I'll smoke one, set it to the side, grab the other clean pipe, smoke it for a week, set it to the side. So I just kind of create a rotation uh, which helps uh, me with, you know, the whole time thing um, as far as cleaning my t cleaning my pipe. If you have one pipe, you know what, every week should be fine um, with it. Um, if you have time to do it more than that, by all means. But um, I'm finding, you know, every week uh, to be a pretty good balance um, as far as if you, you know, if you're pressed for time. Okay, so that speaks to frequency. Let's talk about the materials that you're going to need uh, in order uh, to do a thorough cleaning on your pipe. Um, we have pipe cleaners here. You can buy these at uh, any smoke shop or any cigar shop. Um, you'll probably need four or five of them per cleaning. And again, I'll show you what I mean by that once we get going. Um, I have a pipe bowl reamer. Um, this isn't necessary. You can do the same thing that you would do with this with an actual pipe tool uh, that has a uh, that has a scraper like this one. Okay, um, you will need some um, alcohol, um, so either dark or light. Uh, you just need a higher proof. To kind of you know get in there and loosen up some of that gunk. Uh, Everclear 
uh, is a good brand that you can use if you like light. Um, I have Wild Turkey uh, 101 that I use. I kind of like the, uh, the, the aftertaste that it leaves in the pipe uh, once I clean it. And then finally, just some olive oil and a rag, okay? So that is what you would actually need as far as um, in terms of cleaning your pipe and that. Let's get into how to actually uh, clean your pipe and get that done, okay? So um, what we do with our pipe, or what I do, is uh, first thing I wanna do is separate the uh, stem from the shank and the bowl. So uh, we're gonna take that off. And one thing I learned early on, I believe I learned this from Mutton Chop uh, Piper. Uh, shout out to Mutton Chop. Um, but um, you don't, when you take your mouthpiece off, you don't wanna do it back and forth and pull it off. Um, apparently that uh, warps the, um, the seal between the two uh, over time. Um, and you don't want that, so they say you just go in one direction as you pull it off, like so, okay? So you have your two parts here, you have your bowl and your shank, and you have your stem. So let's start with the stem, okay? So um, what I do is I'll take my pipe cleaner, and I like to put the alcohol in like, I have it in a pill bottle. You can put it in any other uh, bottle form. Um, I would just leave it in here, uh, leave it in the bottle it came in and dip it, but you're going back and forth between the used pipe and the cleaner, uh, the pipe cleaner. And it gets kind of dirty and you're getting gunk out of there. So I don't want to ruin the whole batch of this because I may want it for another time. <laughs> Um, but, um, so I just pour it in a separate container, kind of put it off to the side when I'm not using it and we're good to go. So, um, so what we do is we take our pipe cleaner, we take our mouthpiece. You don't have to saturate, uh, or really soak the pipe cleaner. I just give it a quick dip in and out like so. And then I go into that hole that is in my mouthpiece or my stem and I'm just gonna come down and I like to come down until I see it out of the other end and once I have that I just kind of like to work back and forth like so okay all right. come on out of there all right so do that a couple of times and I've cleaned this one um, a week ago, so it's not as dirty. But um, normally, if you smoke for about a week or so and you pull that through one time, you're going to have a lot of gunk on there. So the first one I wet, run through back and forth a couple of times. Then I follow up with a dry pipe cleaner, okay? And I do the same thing in through the top feed it all the way through. And again, I'm just gonna work back and forth here. Um, a lot of times I'll just come this way towards the edge of the mouthpiece to kind of get whatever gunk is closer to the uh, rim of the mouthpiece. But just in general, just in and out, okay? And that kind of dries it from the first one, okay? And ideally you wanna do that till you have a relatively clean pipe cleaner um, and you know what it'll look like from the one you started with until the one you finish okay so that takes care of our stem for now now let's move to the shank and to the bowl um, and what I like to do there you can either use your reamer um, or your pipe tool so with the reamer um, pretty nifty tool here um, you just fit it onto the bottom of your pipe and like so so it fits in there nice and neat then you have that little handle up top and all we're going to do is just twist just twist and that cleans all of the cake from on the side of your 
on the side of your pipe bowl. Now, I've heard about like allowing the cake to build up on the side of your um, on the side of your pipe bowl. I'm not really sure how much of that you're supposed to let build up, but I will tell you that the smoke that I had was totally different. Um, it was much. Um, I was able to draw more. It seemed like when I ran that reamer through and got a lot of that cake off. Um, again, I'm not sure why um, they talk about allowing that to build up. Maybe I'll find that out. Or if you know that, you can comment below and we can kind of teach each other something here with that. But uh, kind of letting that, or taking that reamer through uh, was really helpful in uh, the smoke itself as far as like being able to draw more smoke uh, from the pipe during uh, the time that I was smoking. Okay, so that's the bowl. So now let's do the shank portion of the pipe. And it pretty much is the same procedure. I'm just going to dip and then just going to go right into the shank. And after you clean the inside of your bowl, you should be able to see the tip. I don't know if you can see it from there, but you should be able to see the tip of your pipe cleaner in the bottom of your bowl, okay? And so once I got that, just kind of in and out here a few times, okay? So yeah, you can see that has a little build up on it there. So now I'm just gonna, so that's the wet side. Now I'm just gonna flip it around to my dry side Come back in again, again, making sure that I'm getting all the way through. All right? Keep going there like that a few times. Okay? That's still a little moist, so I'll grab another dry one. And I'll just do the same thing. All right? And a couple few times in like that. All right? So, that is the stem the bowl and the shank as far as cleaning, right? So now we want to put it back together. And again, we don't want to do that, you know, back and forth type. We want to go the same way, all the way in until the stem is flush with your shank, okay? Right? Now, after we do that, we'll take a little bit of olive oil here. I know you was wondering what that was for. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to put it on our rag here. All right. And we're going to just kind of go over the mouthpiece of the pipe. That plastic gets pretty brittle and nasty as a result of it constantly being in and out of your mouth. Um, the olive oil just kind of helps soften that, keep that plastic supple and soft. Um, I not only do the mouthpiece, but I just kind of go over the whole pipe itself, kind of keep my pipes looking nice. You know, these jokers are, you know, $60, $70 and up, so you kind of want to take care of them. So that's just kind of a way um, that you can, um, you know, kind of keep the plastic right on your mouthpiece and actually just kind of keep your pipe looking right as well, okay? So there you have it. That is cleaning your tobacco pipe. Like I said, I recommend um, every week or so, if you have more time uh, to do it more times than that, uh, every smoke or every other smoke, have at it. Uh, but like I said, I have a few pipes. I clean them all at once. I kind of rotate them every week so that I'm not doing that whole process every few days or or whatever like that um so yeah there you have it man uh cleaning your tobacco pipe um listen thank you for joining me i hope this this was uh something valuable for you um if you have any questions or any comments feel free uh to you know put them down below uh with the video uh again stay tuned we got uh, the smokehouse lounge coming up next and thanks for joining me. As usual, I am Big Will McKinney, and this 
has been Small Girls Talks. <laughs> is going on good people of YouTube welcome back you have now entered the smokehouse lounge this is a place where we talk about just trending topics of the day again I'm trying to recreate kind of a cigar lounge type of feel with these uh, with this segment of the show so feel free to grab your pipe grab a glass of wine your favorite liquor and let's talk about it all right so, um, the cigar or the pipe tobacco of choice today, um, I'm smoking on some peaches and cream. It is a, a mix of Virginia and there's some Cavendish in there and it's been flavored with kind of, uh, uh, it has the casing of peaches and cream. Um, I don't know if you guys uh, checked out uh, my video where I was talking about tobacco types uh, But with these types of tobaccos you got to kind of let them sit for a little while because they're very moist uh, with that casein or that flavoring um, um, So I let it set I got it yesterday let it sit out for about 24 hours um, So we should be ready to go so peaches and cream is the smoke for today um, sipping on some Long Branch uh, Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, this is actually actually Matthew McConaughey's um, new um, bourbon. And it's not really bad. It's not really bad at all. Um, picked that up the other day. So we're going to be sipping on that while we're uh, discussing our topic for today. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to give you some time. Get your pipe. Get your stuff together. Get a comfortable seat. And we're going to talk about some things. So, mm. Mm. that smokes really good. Really good. You can taste the sweetness of that Virginia plus the peaches uh, type uh, aroma. Really good stuff. Good stuff. Mm. So, I was trying to think about what would be a good topic uh, to talk about or a good trending topic to talk about. Um, I don't know if you guys have been watching the news or even your, your feeds um, on your phones or on your computer, uh, but something uh, caught my attention a couple weeks ago. Um, the guy from uh, Ellen, uh, Twitch, Stephen Boss. Um, uh, the dancer guy who um, unfortunately uh, took his life um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I was just thinking about um, mental health um, and how, you know, how, especially going into the new year and all of the things that's been going on with COVID and um, you know, how that is something that we really need to start paying close attention to. Um, I unfortunately have um, some relationship uh, with um, suicide. Uh, my brother, uh, some years ago, uh, took his life uh, by suicide and um, just devastating, uh, just devastating. So anybody um, who is personally acquainted with that, um, you really have my, my, my sympathies and my thoughts because it is really a serious thing uh, to deal with. And um, what stands out to me um, is how, I don't know if you guys ever watched the Ellen show, and if you didn't, you can certainly uh, pull up videos of us, uh, Mr. Boss on YouTube um, or even on the Ellen show itself. And he was just such a uh, uh, just it, it, on the surface he seemed to be so positive and um, so happy and um, just full of energy uh, the guy was just beyond talented as far as his uh, ability uh, to dance and 
just a well-spoken man, very articulate uh, when he would speak. And uh, you, it, it just, it, you know, the ideal of how you can, on the surface, uh, you can be, um, you can look one way and be totally the opposite on the inside. And, you know, that was kind of the deal with my brother. You know, we didn't see uh, any of that coming. Um, just going on about his day, um, as usual, and, you know, out of nowhere. Um, so, yeah, I, let's, let's talk about that, man. Like, you know, we're, you talk about all of the health challenges that are going on, whether it be obesity or, or heart disease or this, that, and the other. And, you know, that whole mental health thing kind of gets pushed to the wayside. And, you know what, y'all, we got to start paying attention to that. I'm 53 years old, right? I've heard a lot of different theories and a lot of different people talking about, particularly with men, right? Like how men should, you know, you should, excuse me, you shouldn't show emotion and you should be a, and a man should, and a da-da-da-da-da-da-da. You got men walking around like that today, and you know what? They're ticking time bombs because maybe they don't talk to anybody. They don't feel as though uh, they can, or as men, we're not supposed to, you know, we're supposed to just, you know, protect, provide, and that's all we do, and forget about how we're feeling about things. Now, I'm not a touchy, feely type of, you know, all off into my feelings type of guy, but. You know, y'all, I mean, there's something to be said about how you think and, 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 and how you feel. And while I'm not suggesting that we be somewhere off in a corner in a ball of tears, I'm not suggesting that. But, y'all, we got to, you know, this ideal of quiet desperation. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Quiet desperation. How, you know, you look one way on the outside like Mr. Boss, like my brother, but inside you're like dying. You know, and, and you can't talk to anybody. You can't tell anybody about it. Mm. What a horrible way to be. Like I, I think about that, like, with my brother. Like, it was so bad that, A, you couldn't talk to anybody, but, B, you didn't see any other way out um, than besides something that you can never reverse, right? So this idea of living in quiet desperation, I think we got to get beyond that. Again, at 53, and I've, you know, when I was younger, you, you know, I came up with the old school father, and you know, uh, uh, you know, we, don't, we ain't got time for that. You know, his work needs to be done. We gotta, you know, and I came up under that type of, uh, uh, that type of mentality, and and yeah, that has its place. But now that I think about it, I think my dad was living in a lot of that, a lot of that quiet desperation, and. The quality of life that you have living like that, that can, that can be avoided, right? Just by reaching out. You know, I don't think that makes you any less of a man or, um, uh, or diminishes uh, from your manhood by saying, you know what, I got a lot going on. And you know what, <clears throat> if you don't want to share that with your spouse, your significant other, you know, there's counselors, there's, a, but you know, the, the ideal of somehow doing that makes us, uh, makes us weak. And, and there's even people today online, I hear them all the time. I ain't got time. I ain't got time to be worried about how I feel and how I think and da, 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 da. And two videos later, you see them in the emergency room, uh, because, you know, they're having anxiety or panic attacks. Listen, it's about balance, right? You got to like balance this thing out. You know, yes, there's priority uh, with work and life and creating that balance. But mental health is just as important, just as important. And can't get away from that. Can't get away from that. All I can think about with uh, Mr. Balls is just how happy he looked. Um, on these shows and how happy he looked when he was performing. And, you know, again, him, you know, living in this quiet desperation that would ultimately take his life. Man, horrible. Just just horrible uh, place to be. 
Um, and he's not the only one. I mean, we all have stuff. We all have stuff going on in life, right? So, man, I would, you know, uh, my suggestion, my suggestion, and again, I don't think I'm right on everything or I have all the answers. Um, old pastor friend of mine, he would say, I got to get that stuff up out of me. I, I, I got to just get it up out of me. And, and, and maybe that's a good place to start with as far as improving our mental health. That, you know what, I, I'm fortunate enough that I have people, rather it is my fiance, my mother, my sisters. I have friends that um, I can go to without judgment and just kind of get that stuff up out of me. But if you don't have that, right, then, man, what's wrong? What is wrong? A lot of us have EAPs on our job, in, employee assistance. So if you think you're going to have or, or have some judgment, don't tell anybody. Just go set up an appointment with a therapist through your EAP. Just go talk to somebody and get that stuff up off of you. It doesn't make you any less of a man that, you know what, you, that the, 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 the things of life weigh down on us. And for some people, unfortunately, it weighs down on them enough that they see no other way out. Uh, than to leave permanently. So, man, we got to do better. We got to do better. And I'm not judging those. I don't know how you came up. Um, I don't know what experiences you have uh, in life um, that even that either makes you adverse to something like that, or make you, or that makes you open to it. Um, but. Jeez, man, it, you know, again, at 53, um, you got to get that stuff up out of you, man. We got we to gotta do better as far as our mental health. So what? You're making tons of money and, and, and you're providing and you're, that's great. But you know what? I, I wonder how many of us are doing that part and your home life is struggling because that quiet desperation. You know, you're doing great at the at the job. You're excelling at your job. Um, but you come home in, you know, quiet desperation. Has to be a balance there, right? That's all I'm suggesting. We need a balance as far as our mental health goes. And we need to make it a priority, right? So, um, you know what, to um, Mr. Boss's family, um, you know, my deepest condolences to anybody out there who um, has uh, lost a loved one um, to suicide. Um, my deepest condolences, like I said, I know from a firsthand basis how devastating uh, that is. But it's something that we can get a hold of, right? And um, I'd be interested to get your thoughts. Um, uh, you know, I'm... I, 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 I do therapy. Um, I listen to a lot of uh, stuff online about mental health. I read a lot. I'd be curious um, if there's, you know, any other things that maybe uh, you guys can help me through your comments uh, suggest to the audience um, about meditation is a thing that I've recently picked up uh, that is yielding really good results. Um, and I just can't help but to think that whether it's my brother or Twitch or Mr. Boss, if they had some of these outlets that we're talking about now, if, uh, if it would have made a difference. Maybe it wouldn't have, but can't help to think that maybe it could have, right? So, you know, not trying to make this super heavy or this, that, and the other, but it's something that needs to be talked about. Mental health and how... We need to create that balance in life, and it's a new year. Happy New Year to everybody, by the way. Uh, but as we go into the new year, if, I, if I've done nothing uh, in this conversation uh, but put the thought in your mind that uh, we need to create some balance there, then that's an awesome thing, okay? So listen, thank you for joining me, joining me for another episode of the Smokehouse Lounge. Um, uh, be sure to subscribe and like the video uh, as usual. You already know what it is. I am Big Will McKinney. Thank you for joining us. This has been the Smokehouse Lounge.
the end. <laughs>